I found a way to get LEDs to light up as the Lumen PMP places them onto a circuit board using conductive ink. But I had to manually apply that conductive ink onto every pad before I did it. And as many of you mentioned, it would be really cool if the machine could do that itself and extrude the ink out onto each pad before it places the parts. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. What I'm going to do is make a new Z gantry for the Lumen PMP using an off the shelf syringe with a lure lock tip. This is an awesome standard typically used in the medical industry. So I'm going to find a way to have a motor push this down really precisely and squirt out the ink out of a tip and also have this mount onto the Lumen PMP and move up and down in the Z axis so it can go down, squirt a little bit of ink out, move up and then go to the next pad. And because it doesn't need to be that strong and I want it to be really light, I'm going to use this. This is a NEMA 8 motor, not a NEMA 17 or a NEMA 11 even. It is so small, it's only 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters on its front profile. I feel like I could swallow this thing. <laughs> but this is gonna be what drives the ink in and out of the syringe. Oh, I'm an idiot. Okay, I have it all mounted up on the machine. I took off the whole left Z gantry and I put my contraption there instead. And I've filled up a syringe with the bare conductive ink. I know at the end of the last video, I said I was gonna be working on materiality and stuff. That's hard. <laughs> I'm still in the middle of doing all that. There are so many variables to tweak. So in the meantime, I'm just gonna stick with the bare conductive. I'll talk a little bit more about the materials at the end because I've been doing some experiments. But for now, this is my cartridge and this will just drop right in. As long as this screw is held in place in this orientation, as it spins, it's gonna drive the screw in and out and that's going to extrude the ink where it needs to be. I'm a little worried about this NEMA 8. <laughs> I had it skip steps just a little bit when I was driving this without any ink in it. So now extruding the ink, <sighs> I'm a little worried about it. <laughs> there isn't a fantastic way of pulling out all the positions of all the pads. So I'm just gonna manually jog through and pick out all the positions of all the pads and write a little slicer that just kind of drops all the ink down where it's supposed to go and do some tweaking. And hopefully we can get a consistent ink deposition. And then ideally after that, we could just run the pick and place job. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so excited. How cool if it could just and then go to the other head and pop, 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 place them all in. Ah, it's gonna be good. Let's give it a try. That's so cool. Hmm. It didn't start until a little late and it's a little too much. So I got to tweak those and then we should be good. Attempt number two. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Still needs a little love, but it's close. <laughs> How cool. <laughs> oh yeah, that's it. That's it.
So that worked like really well. Okay, so now I need to pair this with running an actual job and populating the parts right afterwards. It still puts out maybe a little too much ink. I'm worried it's gonna short. So I think I'm gonna reduce that amount a little bit. I think I've probably done like maybe five or six different iterations of different settings to see how much to prime it and how long to wait and how much to extrude each time, the correct height and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so now I'm gonna hook the board up to power and get my job prepped and I'm gonna try and see if it'll do the whole thing in one fell swoop. Blank board goes on, working PCB comes out. <laughs> so cool. All right, here we go. No way. No actual way. <laughs> that is the coolest thing. Wow. Look at that. I don't even have words for how freaking stoked I am from that. All in one? Fell swoop, one job, blank PCB. Pace goes on, parts go on, it's working. Out of the gate. <laughs> it's so cool. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm stoked. There are definitely some things to tweak for sure. My positions for some of the LEDs were not great when I grabbed the position where wherever the tip was and I was just literally writing down the coordinates for each one of the little spots I wanted it to go. I don't think I was that accurate and that's why now after a little bit of time, some of the LEDs aren't lit up anymore. You can see that the ink was not perfectly centered. And this is partially because the script that I wrote that does the ink deposition does not have any vision alignment associated with it. It's all totally dead reckoning. So all the benefits of the fiducial homing that we have for a normal pick and place job doesn't happen here. So the next step to really bring the accuracy up and make it more consistent would be having the script that I wrote that actually does the ink deposition do a fiducial homing to align everything first and then it would be dead on. And also ideally even doing a fiducial alignment, not just fiducial homing, but also scanning the fiducials on the board and doing the linear matrix transform of all the positions that's like the right way to do it. But for a first pass dead reckoning just to see if it works, it, it does. It actually works. <laughs> it's so cool. Now the way I was able to write the code to control the Lumina to do this this quickly is because I've been working on a new Python library called Leash. Leash is intended to be an all-in-one Python library for controlling the Lumen PNP. It knows how to talk to it. It can recognize when a Lumen is attached to that computer. It can open the cameras. It knows enough about the machine that it's really easy to just tell it what to do and you can effectively puppeteer a Lumen PNP to do anything that you want. I wrote this because I wanted to have a tool to be able to quickly do stuff like this and play around with just telling the Lumen where to go and what to do. But also a lot of people have been interested in using the Lumen PNP for weird stuff and having a really easy little Python library where you could just import it in your project and suddenly you have complete control over the machine is pretty handy. So there's a link in the description if you wanna go check out the repository. It's still definitely a work in progress. I'm trying to add more features, but I've been adding more and more as I work on weird stuff that I'm doing with the machine. Now I wanna try solder paste. And then there's like a real practical application to this. So far, this has all just kind of been messing around, seeing cool, interesting things you can do with the machine. But if there's solder paste in that, now you can take the board out and reflow it, and then you have like a full production PCB. That's awesome. I really want to mess around with that. Also, at the end of the last video, I said that I would be playing chemist and start messing around with different formulations of trying to make a better adhesive, a conductive goop that I can extrude out onto the PCB to do this whole process. And the reason this video is not about that is because that's a lot. <laughs> the spreadsheet I have of comparing all the multiple variables of adhesive and mixture percentages and resulting resistances and grippiness and all that kind of stuff is, it's extensive. There's a lot going on there. I did, however, want to address one of the biggest comments I got in the last video, which was, why don't you use UV resin? Which is such a good idea. UV resin is exactly the kind of stuff you put into an SLA 3D printer, a goop that only solidifies when you apply UV light to it. This means you effectively have an infinite working time as long as there's no UV light shining on it. And then when you want to cure it and solidify it, you just shine it with a light and you're done. So I experimented with this and it doesn't work. <laughs> I have some UV resin that I tried curing with the UV light. It hardens as normal, exactly what you'd expect. And then once you add in all this 
jet black additive, this carbon, carbon black, lamp black as it's also called, and graphite powder, it completely attenuates the UV light shining through the resin, and it just doesn't cure at all. It will actually get a tiny little film of cured resin along the top surface, but everything underneath, all the graphite in there, all the carbon is blocking the light from going through and it just doesn't cure. If you have experience with this kind of thing and you're going, Steven, you dummy, why are you doing it that way? This is the way you can get it to still cure. Please tell me in the comments because I think UV is a great approach. Also, if you are interested in this whole design that I have and Oof, it's pretty rough. I whipped this together and freak out in a couple hours just to get something to extrude. I'm gonna toss it up into a GitHub repository. So if you wanna download it, put it on your Lumen, play around with it, improve my CAD, link in the description. All right, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Fifty-five burgers, fifty-five fries, fifty-five coffees, and 155 taters.